decided to dress up in my old Jack Sparrow costume, and that's Captain Jack Sparrow. I don't have any rum with me. I just realized that. I should probably get some by the time the recording's over. Probably need to do that. All pirates need rum to operate. I have to get Steve on that. Yeah, I can't do this. Sorry. I. <laughs> Welcome to the Halloween video, everybody. I had a lot of ideas this year for the Halloween video, and um, I know I was getting prepared for my actual costume, so I threw this on very quickly. Um, I'm ranking Star Wars movies for Halloween this year, and you're probably going to be like, what's that have to do with Halloween? A lot of people dress up like Star Wars characters for Halloween, so that's a t that's that's the tie-in. So if you don't know how I do my rankings, I rank them by S, A, B, C, D, F, and haven't seen, because of course I can't rank the ones that I haven't seen yet. S being really the best, superior than the rest, um, and A being great, B being okay, C being average, D is like not the greatest, not really my favorite, F is trash, not worth the watch. So the first one we have here is Ep Episode 2, Attack the Clones. I really do not like Attack of the Clones. I don't feel it's a good movie. I don't feel it's a good Star Wars movie. Just a lot of things in it don't don't really make sense. Like, if your son was a clone, he wouldn't be young like that. He would be on a full-on adult. He, he's not... He couldn't age if he was a clone. Um, that, be, that being the first thing. Uh, it, it's just not... It's just not written well. It's it's why to me it's episode one and two are why the prequels are so hated. So uh, and I've never really liked it. So episode two is easily going in the F tier. And also I really it's very strange. The Padme and Anakin thing is just really strange because there was nothing like that in Star Wars before. Empire Strikes Back is easily in the S tier. It's a classic. It's, you know, the original three, which I don't really... I, I don't subscribe to the idea of episode, the first three movies are the best in the series because Return of the Jedi is not very good. I, I, I don't really like Return of the Jedi, but... So I don't base them on that, but Empire Strikes Back is just incredible. I mean, you have Hoth, which is a classic planet. You've got, you know, the classic Darth Vader line, of course. The way that it develops its characters from the first one to the second one, and even even to the third one, is just... And it, set, it sets up, it really does set up the rest of the series. Um, because very important things happen in Empire Strikes Back. Like, you know, you've got Yoda in it, and Yoda's probably my favorite Star Wars character. Um, it's just so good, so put that in S easily. Revenge of the Sith is an interesting one, because I don't feel it's, it's probably the best out of the prequels, and I will sit down and watch this sometimes if it's, like, on TV. Uh, and I, I do enjoy it. But I only enjoy half of it. And that's the part when Anakin becomes Darth Vader, because you have the, the battle and everything, uh, which is the lightsaber duel is just amazing. Probably the best, probably my favorite lightsaber, lightsaber duel out of any in the entire series. Maybe besides... Maybe, be, maybe besides... Phantom Menace, and maybe besides the Luke and Vader one in Empire. So I'm going to put it in C because it, it's really divided. I like one half of the movie, and then I don't really like... Or I like... I don't really like the first half of the movie, and then the second half of the movie I really like. Um, and it also sets up Kenobi, which I loved Kenobi, and I'll talk about that more. Episode 1 is interesting, too, because I don't hate Episode 1. I'm not one of the Episode 1 haters. I don't like Jar Jar Binks, and a lot of it is a government movie. Like, it's written 
it, it's written if George Lucas wanted to make a movie about a government and not a Star Wars movie. Because the things that it talks about and like trade and stuff, that's just real, real world problems. And you don't really want to watch a sci-fi fantasy movie and be reminded of like real world events. So I, I, I can take that away from it. And also it has Jar Jar. I hate Jar Jar. He's such a dumb character. And then it's even more stupid that in the second movie he becomes like... What is it? He becomes a... Um, like a Congress push person. I forget what they're exactly called. But it's just so stupid. Like how could a guy, a Gungan that dumb, become a leader? Like it, it's it's beyond... His character is beyond stupid. So I'm going to put episode 1 in F, even though it has the Darth Maul fight, even though it has Darth Maul. I love me some Darth Maul. Darth Maul is a great character. But you give him one movie and no time to develop, and each of the each of the prequel movies have a Sith in them that each of them are different. Why would you not have Darth Maul in the second one, have him killed off in the second one, actually get to like know the character for a little bit instead of having Count Dooku that nobody cares about it's it's I don't like episode one put in an F don't hate it though Clone Wars I'm afraid to admit it I've never seen Clone Wars I've seen a couple episodes but I never I never watched it when I was a kid and I haven't sat down and watched the entire series so I have to put that in haven't seen uh, this is also an animated show that I've never seen. I, I don't really know what it is, so haven't seen with that, of course. Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi is, one, is famous for one thing, and that's uh, Leia in a particular scene. Um, I don't like Return of the Jedi all that much. I, I don't mind the Ewoks. It, I, I don't really like... Jabba, I, 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 I feel like that part is very, very, very slow. Like in the beginning of the movie when they're at Jabba's palace and then they're on the ship and it's just like, why can't you just get Han and get out? Like it, it takes so long. But the end is okay. It's just not really my favorite. I guess I... I, I I'm going to put it at B. Uh, just because it's not, I, it's not my least favorite, but it's also really, like, not my, my favorite either. Um, so yeah, put it, put it in B. It's okay. Rogue One is incredible. I don't care if you don't like Rogue One or not. Rogue One is great. Um, it just adds more. And everyone's like, I don't like Rogue One because the characters die at the end. It adds more to the characters. If they didn't die at the end... It, there would be a lot of questions to why aren't we don't why don't we see them for the rest of the movies but the fact that the characters gave their lives to the rebellion is adds so much more depth to their characters and and I I like it more because of that fact the Darth Vader scene I want to talk about this very quickly the Darth Vader scene saved char Darth Vader's character in the public eye. Because before you had Darth Vader in like the Star Wars Weekends commercials and you had like the Disneyland commercials. You had Hyperspace Hoopla, which go check out my interview with Robbie Pygott. He played Snake in Hyperspace Hoopla. You know I love Hyperspace Hoopla, but it kind of takes us away from the character when you see Darth Vader, you know, dancing to beat it. it we talk about it in the interview, so go check it out if you want more explanation to what I'm talking about. But, like, you have, you have that. You have the commercials that he was in. And uh, there, there's, there's been other stuff, too. Oh, the merchandise and everything. So Darth Vader is supposed to be a scary character. And, and you're supposed to fear him. He's supposed to be the villain. And in a lot of, specifically kids... That and adults when this movie came out, but but the kid in the kids' minds, he wasn't scary. But then that scene where he kills everybody in that rooms viciously, that and ever since then, Darth Vader has been taken a whole lot more seriously in the movies and in the public's eye.
So, so that scene, you have to give respect to Rogue One. I'm putting Rogue One in A. Oh, I honestly don't remember Solo. Uh, because I turned it off halfway through the first time that I watched it, and then the second time I watched it, I just don't remember it. It's very forgettable. Um, but it's Han's story, so you, you gotta give it that. I, I, I honestly, I don't remember a single part of Solo. So I should put in a haven't seen, but I, I, I have seen it. It's just a forgettable movie. So I'm going to put it in D. A and then Star Wars Rebels I will put in haven't seen because I don't, I don't watch the animated TV shows. I'm sorry. Speaking of, Bad Batch I haven't seen, so put that in haven't seen. Force Awakens, I like Force Awakens. Um, it's, I know it's just a rehash, basically. It has the exact same story of the first movie, but... You get to, you get reintroduced to classic characters. And, you know, it's the first time that we've seen Han... If you're watching them in order, it's the first time that we've seen him since, um, you know, Return of the Jedi. So it's really, it's really cool to get reintroduced to those characters like that. Listen, you can say whatever you want about the Disney, Mar uh, the Disney Star Wars movies, but... Force Awakens is probably the best one, so I'm gonna rank it the highest and put it at B. The original Star Wars, A New Hope, is my favorite out of the entire series. So of course I'm gonna put that in as. Not only are there classic moments, you got the, the amazing characters in there, you get to see Luke before he becomes a Jedi, and... It, for, for some reason, I don't think Jedi Knight Luke is the coolest. I, I, I really do feel like Tatooine Luke is, is the coolest. Because he's a dreamer at that point. He hasn't reached his goals. And, and people can connect with that Luke. Here's another S. Mandalorian is the best Star Wars product to come out since Return of the Jedi. Mandalorian is... So f is phenomenal in so many ways. It feels like for the first time when this came out, it felt like a true Star Wars product and Star Wars movie. Like if you if you release Mandalorian with the original three, it would it it would fit and and it feels the exact same. And then they did that later with Kenobi, and Kenobi is phenomenal as well. But Mandalorian, I mean, I'm so looking forward. Season 3 is on its way. I'm so excited for that. And every when these seasons release, I cannot wait until Friday to watch them. So they're just so good. So easily an S for Mandalorian. Last Jedi I is my least favorite Star Wars movie. It is so dumb in so many ways. It's not so. So explain to me how Ray's character just gets erased. Not in this movie, really, but in in Rise of Skywalker. But you're not supposed to know who Ray's parents are. And in this movie, they start to explain who they are. They're not. You're not supposed to know that. In Force Awakens, they specifically don't tell you that because they want you to make your own conclusions. It's idiotic. And, and, and then the Force Ghost Yoda having, you know, burning all the Jedi books. Why would he do that? Like, it's... And then, and, you know, Luke dies in it and it's just... It's a mess of a movie. It really is. So F tier for Last Jedi. And then speaking of... Rise of Skywalker. I did a Rise of Skywalker review, like, fully, if you want to go check it out. And in that review, I defended Rise of Skywalker. And since then, my opinion has changed a little bit. Like, I do think that a lot of the movie is dumb. And to be honest with you, I haven't seen it since it came out. Like, that's how stupid some of the parts were. Like, when Chewbacca gets captured, and then it doesn't lead anywhere, so they just uncapture him. And then you're... Uh, like you're you're thought to you're you're supposed to believe that Chewbacca is dead, and you know that he's not going to be dead because it's Chewbacca. They want they want to kill Chewbacca. Like it's it, 
Some parts of it are, are just straight up stupid. But the, the, the Palpatine thing, like I said before, you're not supposed to know who Rey's parents are. And that just gets erased after Force Awakens. And yes, it's stupid. Yes, at the end, it's stupid that she says she's a Skywalker. Because to me, her being a Palpatine is kind of powerful. But I'm, I'm contradicting myself because I just said you're not supposed to know your, who her parents are. And that's the core of the character. But if you are going to introduce her parents and who they actually are, it, it's, it's meaningful that it's a Palpatine. Because it's showing that because of your bloodline in the Star Wars universe, you, you don't have to be good or evil. You, if you come from an evil bloodline, you can be good. But, but then her at the end saying that she's a Skywalker just erases all of that. There isn't a lot to like in this movie, but again, it has Claude. And Claude is, easy, is one of my favorite Star Wars characters by far, so it's going in D. Book of Boba Fett I didn't like. Book of Boba Fett is Mandalorian season three. Um, with with being with having Boba Fett in the title, you would think it would be a Boba Fett series, and it wasn't. Um, immensely disappointing series. So I'm gonna put that in F. I did not like Boba Fett one bit. And uh, this is gonna be the last one that I have seen. I loved Kenobi. Obi Wan Kenobi was an amazing series. Not only because you get to see Ewan and he did an amazing job and Aiden Christensen and James Earl Jones reprised his voice as Darth Vader it, it, it's an amazing series it has a great story with Leia and uh, you get to see young Luke which is amazing um, and and the just the redemption story of Vader trying to get revenge is just so scary and so cool I was so looking forward to every week that, that that episode would drop because it would just, every single one's amazing. So, Kenobi going in S. I loved it. Andor I have not watched yet. Um, it, it released, but I just haven't seen it. Uh, so, haven't seen. I am looking forward to watching it soon. And uh, Tales of the Jedi I haven't seen, so that's going in, in haven't seen. There is my tier list from S to F. All the Star Wars movies ranked. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of my rankings. If you agree with me or if you don't. Also, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that like button and consider subscribing. And with that, I'll see you all in the next one. Have a magical day, everybody.